Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord Jesus, make us worthy in the abundance of your grace and mercy to glorify your resurrection with pure hearts, to celebrate your victory with holy hymns, and to proclaim your might with pure tongues. We thank you for your love and worship you, crying out, Christ is risen, he is truly risen. To you be glory, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Praise God. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the living and immortal one who gave life to his people by his cross and salvation to his church and happiness to his flock by his resurrection. When he appears, he shall give joy to his inheritance. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast and all the days of our lives and forever. We worship and praise you, O only begotten Son. You descended into the darkness of the tombs and worked wonders in the realm of the dead. By your resurrection you freed the captives, and by your voice you awakened the righteous and the just who had gone to their rest in the sleep of death. You gathered the nations to worship you and to proclaim your salvation. They rejoice and they cry out, on Friday, the king endured pain and was crucified, and today victory has been achieved by his resurrection. On Friday, a lance opened his side, and today in his compassion the waters of baptism flow. On Friday, he was crowned with thorns, and today he has adorned his church with a crown of splendor. Today is the day of rejoicing in the resurrection. Today is the day of rejoicing for all who have gone to their rest in hope of the resurrection. Today, with the fragrance of this incense, the church and her children celebrate and sing hymns of glory, saying, O Creator of life, you have saved us by your passion and have given us life by your resurrection. Now renew our image by your grace. Clothe our bodies with the power of the Spirit, so that we may shine in the robe of glory in its light to see you, the true bridegroom. In your grace, make us and all the faithful departed worthy of your heavenly kingdom, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever.
church on earth delights in Christ, that she may rejoice on high. O Lamb of God, who has sacrificed yourself for us, we give you thanks, so in sense of forgiveness we worship you. For you have brought us close to your Father, enriched us by your birth, purified us by your baptism, sanctified us by your crucifixion, reconciled us to the Father by your resurrection, raised us up by your ascension, and adorned us with the gifts of your Spirit. Now, O Lord, accept our incense and fill us always with your sweet fragrance, so that our tongues may never cease in giving thanks to you forever. Amen. Kaddishat aloho kaddishat church is rejoicing for her shepherd truly rose Christ who died for his people conquered death to give new life Lord our God you accepted what the just had A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, but if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God, because we testified against God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if in fact the dead are not raised. 
For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has, has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead came also through a human being. For just as in Adam all die, so too in Christ <coughs> shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Praise be to God always. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Hallelujah. Praise, glory, and honor the most holy Trinity. And the sunset. Give you this song. <clears throat> Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark, who proclaim life to the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Mark writes, When the Shabbat was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who shall roll back the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. And it was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. And he said to them, Do not fear. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised, and he's not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go now and tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. And there you shall see him as he has told you. Then they went out and they fled from the tomb, seized with a trembling and bewilderment. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Lord, give me the sweetest words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. This gospel of the first day of the week, and it's important to see that in the gospels, when in English the translation, we say the first day of the week, but in fact, the way it's recounted is hemeramia, day one, which would go, well, what's the difference? But under the inspiration, of course, these authors choose something. And choosing this word to say, not just the first day of the week, which is always going to be Sunday, or the first day of the week, but day one. Because the creation, the new creation, is what results from the resurrection of our Lord. Now, I've put a little brief, brief blurb into the bulletin this week by starting to comment by saying that what happens to our Lord is done not for him, but for us. Our Lord is the eternal one, the living one. He is existence itself and life itself. His entrance into humanity is meant to be for the purpose of Passover, which is why you see on the front of the bulletin, in our Syriac, we properly call it Pesach, Easter, which is just the same as Pesach in the Hebrew for Passover. Because the notion is, is that our Lord enters into time, into humanity, into its fragility, and exactly all things like all men except in sin. He's sinless. And it's that movement from this place of death and limitation and of fear that our Lord passes from this world, not as the Egyptians once, as the Israelites once did from Egypt, from bondage into liberty, but passing from this broken world of wounded and sinfulness and death into the glory which he had from all eternity. That's why in the beginning of Lent, you notice the prayers asked that prepare us for the ability to prepare and to come with you, preparing for your Passover and your resurrection. The Passover is a movement through that death on Good Friday. The resurrection is the beginning of a new creation, day one. And that's why on the back of the bulletin, I have the scene of the angels pointing to the empty linens in the tomb. But I've placed underneath that icon, herald of the new creation. Day one is the total liberation and the renewal of what humanity was meant to be as created in the garden. We'll talk about this a bit more next week, because next week is New Sunday. And New Sunday has a very special meaning for it. But of course, back on the human level, in this world that we have not left yet, that is still tainted by fear and ignorance and death, these women prepared to go back and to accomplish the rest of their devotion to our Lord because they didn't have time on Friday before sundown to properly bury him which is why we're told they go immediately, they buy their things, and they go. And they ask all the questions, of course, that you normally ask. How are we going to get in? There's a massive rock in front of this thing. How are we going to get into the tomb? And of course, the way it's portrayed by St. Mark, of course, is when they arrive, the stone has already been rolled back. You could imagine at first, all right? These three ladies there. All right. Mary, you go first. No, you go first. I'm not going in. You, you go in first, because the door's open. You don't know. That's the first thing, remember. They're already emotionally stretched out and broken by these last three days. Then when they actually do step in, of course, they find this young man sitting in there. And we know we talk about being an angel. But for them, they see a young man sitting there dressed in this brilliant white. In other Gospels, they talk about him appearing, or them appearing as flashes of lightning, so this luminosity around him. And of course, they're totally shocked by all of this. And in the confusion that we have when we're emotionally stretched and we're under stress, we don't think very straight. We're always making mistakes. So you add that compounded emotional strain that's already them coming to the tomb, and then to find this place empty, and this young man sitting in there looking at them like, well, what's the problem? And of course, we're told they're absolutely horrified. They don't know what to do with any of this in that stress of this emotion, which is why the angel says to them, do not be afraid. They've come to find what? 
They've come to this tomb to find death, to prepare a corpse for proper burial. And what they find is the message is, but he's been raised from the dead. But he told you this. He told you several times during when he was with you that he would rise from the dead. Why are you amazed? In fact, in one of the Gospels, it's beautifully written. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Why are you here when you know the living one is the one that you have been following over these last years? It is a great moment of calm as far as what's being portrayed objectively. Of course, subjectively, we're told the women, the women just run after the angels finish speaking to them, they just run out of the tomb. But he does give them a message. Go back to the apostles and to Kepha, Simon Peter, and tell them he will meet you in Galilee just the way he told you. Of course, we know subsequently that our Lord is going to see them in Jerusalem and see them in Emmaus all on the same day, miles and miles apart. And eventually he will also see them also in Galilee later. So all of this that's given to them is based upon that message of do not have fear. Fear is the unknown. Fear is the pain that comes into our lives that causes these great hurdles, evils, things that we don't like, things that we don't want. And when they're proximate and present in our life, we talked about in the bulletin a few weeks ago, that's what provokes fear. But what the angel is saying to these good women is, he told you these things. Why are these things unknown to you? You know that he is the living one. He's told you that he will be here. He told you that he will see you again. He's reminding them, you shouldn't be ignorant. You should know that life is what is being given to you. And that's a different message, which is why he can say to them, don't fear. Not because don't fear because this is what you expected to find in the tomb, but don't fear because the larger picture, you've already been told. Rediscover it, enter into it, the light of the faith, the things that our Lord has already given you. And so it's a beautiful moment for us, especially in the midst of this kind of hysterical crisis at points. We find out it's apparently 9-11 in New York City rings every 15 seconds so that the operators are acting more like counselors. Because, because they're, they're people, they don't have a fever, they don't have a cough, they have no symptoms, but they're just calling 9-11 because they're in panic. So I've told everyone, don't do any more maximum, 30 minutes of news a day, that's all you need. It's been exactly the same thing every time you turn it on, right? So turn it off. The fear is an agitation which continually comes. We know what's happening. But this is what the angel is saying in a much bigger picture on day one. He's told you these things before. Why are you looking for a corpse? He's told you that he will see you again. And as I mentioned in these last few days during the sacred passion of our Lord, death is not the end of the world. Now, if you have no faith, no religion, no nothing, well then yeah, pretty much stops the whole show, doesn't it? But the angel's reminding them, you're looking for a corpse, but you know, because he told you, he is the living one who brings life to the world and all things will be made new again in him. So do not be afraid. And so when the women run away in terror because they don't really know what is going to happen, they do go and tell the apostles. They do go and say they found an empty tomb and this angel. But it's still the beginning of a message, even if it's just little baby steps to recover that vision of life and light and resurrection and confidence. Because it's not upon us that we rely. It's upon the living one who has conquered death and shattered the grave that we rely, that the living one will give us on this day one and henceforth and forever the newness of the new creation and to enter into divinity and to be transformed. 
That's the fullest meaning of the angel when he says, do not be afraid. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So in your booklets, we now perform for us in the Maronite Church what we call the rites of peace, the full idea of the reconciliation that comes on this day one. Now, of course, because of the situation these days, we won't have the full procession. Normally, you're supposed to follow. We go outside, you have candles, or we do it inside. But because we can't really keep the distances, We'll just do, as we've done on Palm Sunday, the short procession up the side, just I and the servers making that procession. But then after what follows is what we call the adoration of the cross. And again, we won't embrace the cross, kiss the cross as we usually do, but each can come up again, keeping distance as you wait with each other coming up, and then bow profoundly from the waist before the cross, or so far as your waist actually bends at this point. It's the adoration to our Lord of the life-giving cross. That's the meaning behind the whole ceremony. And the servers will then, at that point, hand to you the flowers, which we'll bring back over, which have been at the tomb of our Lord over these days, and give you each one of the flowers as you pass back to your places. So that's the only changes that we have. Jesus Christ, our Lord and the Son of God, you are our Lord Jesus Christ, and you saved us from the slavery of Satan. Grant peace and security to the children of your holy church. We call out to you in prayer, O Lord. And then you sing, Hear us.
We will continue on page 748 with the Creed. We believe in one God. Eternal Madem Heda Loho, Walwater Loho, Dam Hanek, Daniel, Wayne, so what I will talk, Hail, Lalbite of Westwood, and Hayek, no, Hot God, a show. sheets for this special transfer hymn for Easter Sunday. Lord and God, you accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, St. Mary and St. Jude and St. Thecla. Remember, O oh God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered, for all the members of this parish, and for the intentions of the Catholic Extension Society and its donors. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We continue with the Anapha of St. James, Brother of the Lord, on page 794. 794. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O God, the Father, lover of all people, though we are unworthy, make us worthy of salvation. Purified of deceit and hypocrisy, and united in a bond of love and peace, through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, may we give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you, now and forever. holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Merciful Lord, you dwell on high and look down upon the earth. Through the grace of your only Son, send your blessings upon those who bow before your holy altar. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O oh God the Father, in your love for all people, you sent your Son into the world to bring the lost sheep back to you. Do not turn your face away from us as we celebrate this spiritual and bloodless sacrifice, relying on your mercy and through the grace of your only Son. We ask that this mystery, instituted for our salvation, not be for our condemnation. Rather, may it blot out all our sins, forgive our faults, and be an expression of our thanks for your goodness. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father, and the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. It is right and just. Truly it is right and just to glorify you, bless you, praise you, adore you, and give you thanks. O maker of all things, visible and invisible. The highest heavens and all its powers praise you, the sun, the moon, and all the stars, the earth, the seas, and all that is in them, the heavenly Jerusalem, and the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, the angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts sing, praising your majestic glory with triumphant hymns, with never-ending voices and with sweet acclamations. They cry out and they proclaim.
Truly you are holy, O God, the Father, King of ages, and giver of all holiness. Holy is your only Son, our Lord and God, Jesus Christ, and holy is your life-giving Spirit, who delves into all things, even into the depths of God. You are holy and almighty, the Creator and the Good One. You formed us from the dust of the earth and gave us the joys of paradise. When we had transgressed your commandments and fell, you did not abandon us, but like a good and merciful Father, you instructed us. Through the law you called out to us, through the prophets you guided us, and at the appointed time you sent your Son, our Lord and God Jesus Christ, into the world to renew your image. He came down and by the Holy Spirit became flesh of the Holy and ever-Virgin Mary and dwelt among us, accomplishing all things for our salvation. And <laughs>
Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Anin Mario, Nite Mauro Hayo Kadisho, Onafen Alain, Walla Corbo no Hono. Sent he may make this bread a life giving body, a saving body, a heavenly body, a body that redeems our souls and bodies, the body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. And make the mixture in this chalice the blood of the new covenant, a life giving blood. A saving blood, a heavenly blood, a blood that redeems our souls and bodies. The blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life for those who receive it. Amen. May these holy mysteries be for the sanctification of the souls and bodies of those who share in them, that they may excel in all good deeds. May they be for the strengthening of your holy church, which you have founded on the rock of faith, so that the gates of hell shall not prevail against her, delivering her from all heresies and doubts until the end of time and forever. Amen. We offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice for your holy church throughout the world and for the holy places that you have glorified by the presence of Christ your Son, especially for Zion, Jerusalem, mother of all the churches. Remember our pure bishops who spread the word of truth, especially our blessed fathers, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the orders of the Church. <coughs> and those who serve you. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, our parents and our, all our brothers and sisters, those who are here praying with us, those who are not here, and those who have asked us to remember them in our prayers. Answer the petitions that will lead to their salvation. Remember those who have presented offerings upon your holy altar, those for whom they have been offered, those who have desired to make an offering but were unable, those whom we have remembered, and those whom we have not. Reward them with the joy of your salvation, and accept their offering upon your heavenly altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, our civil leaders and clothe them in your fear, that they may stand for justice and establish peace. Remember also captives and prisoners, the sick, the suffering, and the afflicted, the needy, and those who labor in all walks of life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord Remember, O Lord, all those who have pleased you from the beginning, the holy and glorious ever-Virgin Mary, the patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, Saint John the Forerunner, Saint Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, Saint James the Brother of the Lord, Saint Joseph, Saint Marin, and all the saints. In your grace, count us among them in the church of your firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the fathers and teachers who spread the word of truth in your holy church and preached your Son, Jesus Christ, to all nations. Through their prayers, grant peace to your church and confirm their teaching in our souls. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
Remember, O God, of all spiritual and earthly beings, the faithful departed who have died in the true faith. Grant them rest and do not take their faults into account. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Grant us pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, it is now, shall be God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all consolation, you have sanctified the offerings and the gifts presented to you and have perfected them by the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit. Sanctify us now, so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O Holy Father, God of heaven, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Yes, O Lord our God, lead us not into temptation that we do not have the strength to endure. But when we are tempted, deliver us through Jesus Christ our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. O oh Lord, we bow our heads before you, awaiting your abundant mercy. Send your blessings upon us and sanctify us, so that we may become worthy to share in your holy mysteries through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his mercy and love for all people. You are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit now and forever. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving will. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. We thank you, O God the Father, for your great and indescribable love for all people. 
Since you have made us worthy to share in your heavenly banquet and in your Holy Spirit, do not forsake us for having received your holy mysteries, but keep us in the radiance of holiness and righteousness. With all the saints, may we obtain a share in the heavenly reward. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, we bless you. Bless us, protect us, and guide us on the path of life. Favorably remember the departed of those who have shared in this Eucharist that was offered upon this divine altar. Grant protection to all the living and bless them with hope. Through the prayers of the Virgin Mary and of all the saints, now and forever. Amen. All right, so this is the point when you're supposed to shout. It's on the back of your bulletins. In the Eastern rites, you can never possibly have a day of the resurrection without jubilation. Jubilation, its foundation word means trumpet. So, you know, I'm on the back, the actual greeting for all of Bright Week. And historically, during this week, you don't go, hi. You say, Mishiho kom men kabro, Christ has risen from the tomb. So that's what you have on the back of your bulletin. That's my part. Your part is a little more complicated. Shariro in Aramaic means true. Shariro if means truly, as an adverb. Kom means rising up. So Meshiho kom men kabro means literally, O Christ who is risen, men kabro from the tomb. And the answer is Shariro if kom. Truly, he is risen. So, are you ready for shouting? Mishihod kom men kabro. Mishihod kom men kabro. Mishihod kom men kabro. Christ is risen. Truly risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. All right, now all the young people, the children, come on up. Up to the bima up here. Notice how attentive I have been. No physical contact. Come on, girls. It's okay. This time the basket comes to you with something in it. We're going to use a solemn blessing that's in the back of the book. I apologize, I meant to mark this beforehand. On page 920. Lord God, you are good and merciful and compassionate. And you accepted the sacrifice and offerings of Abraham, your humble one, Abraham, your friend, Melchizedek, your servant, and all the patriarchs of old. 
Then you accepted the offerings of the apostles, the fathers of the church, the martyrs, and those who believed in your holy name and pleased you by their works. Now, O Lord, in your mercy and compassion, accept this sacrifice that we have offered and through it grant forgiveness to all sinners, health to all the sick, hope to the brokenhearted, consolation to the grieving, rest to the departed, freedom to captives, companionship to those who travel, guidance to those who are far, and protection upon those who are near. O Lord, may your merciful right hand bless this city and this country, this place and those who live here and who believe in your holy name. Keep them from times of trouble and from deep sorrow and fear. Deliver them from dangerous temptations and whatever might harm their bodies or endanger their souls. Guide our civil leaders who believe in your holy name. Forgive my sins and the sins of this beloved community through the intercession of Our Lady, Mother of the Light, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the one God to whom we glory forever.